All right, so for this week's uh, lab, what we'll be doing is using Tinkercad and continue working with the ceiling circuit and we'll be troubleshooting that uh, ceiling circuit. Didn't quite wire it exactly as it needed to be, so we're kind of using that as a kind of a troubleshooting uh, example as well as using an example to um, go through and show you how to draw an electrical circuit as well as going through and showing you how to go through and uh, draw out the ladder logic for it, or the relay logic as we oftentimes refer to. So the circuit that we're gonna be working with, uh, as I said, we've already kind of had it already. Um, I had you add those two wires. Now this is gonna be relay light bulb zero two. You'll copy that, and then you're going to make the changes that are necessary um, to get this to uh, work like I'm going to show you here in a moment. Um, if you would, uh, when you go through and copy this down below here, I'll have you go through and change your name. So it's just an annotated field. You can go through and type over your type your name here, and then you'll do a screenshot of that and send it in to me. All right. So let me switch uh, the applications here. Give me just a moment while uh, this comes forward here. Make sure I've got the right one up here. Let me pause for just a second. All right. So what we'll be doing is working with, um, I'm just gonna kind of set it up and set up the, the line. You can see it just says something slightly different here. This is just my starter uh, project. I'm gonna go ahead and start the uh, simulation here. Um, I've got the two wires in, I ran this into the common 13. I've got a positive coming in on the other side, number four. And then what you'll see is that is going out to the light. So when that closes, it's gonna go through and turn on the light. So I will go through and power that. I'll ground out the negative here. That's gonna close that. And then what I have is, um, oh, I said this is positive. It's actually ground coming in through the common and it's gonna go through and seal that switch. So I click on that, it seals it. And then the next thing is I need to go through and turn it off. So, um, you know, right now all I can do is turn the power off in order to go through and turn it off. And so what I'd like to do is to add another switch in here to actually go through and turn it off. And um, eventually I'd like it to have a, a push button here. Let's just work with a slide switch to begin with. So slide switch works very similar to a toggle switch, which you use in electric motor control. Let's see, uh, stop here. I'm gonna drag it down here and put it on the secondary board here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run this ground here. I'm gonna bring it down into the switch and the center here is kind of like a wiper on a potentiometer or a rheostat. And so that'll allow me to either switch that ground to either the left side or the right side. So right now it's, it's in the normally closed or closed, but if you have a move to the other side, then it would be well open. So let's go through and run this again. I'm gonna start it out. All right, I'm gonna go through and push the button. The light comes on, but when I move the switch here, it doesn't turn it off. So that negative is not coming to the switch. So what's going on here? So we're gonna go through and troubleshoot that. But before we go through and start troubleshooting, what I need to do is, well, to talk a little bit about um, using uh, relay logic and, and some of the different types of symbols that we would go on uh, to do that. So give me just a moment while I go through and change the screen again. And I'm first of all, just gonna go through and draw some different shapes here. And I think I need to go through and move my circuit over so you can kind of see it a little bit better, okay? So first of all, um, what uh, you may not have seen before is what a relay symbol looks like. And there's actually two different ways to do an electrical circuit for a, a symbol for a relay. So uh, first of all, it does start with a coil, right? And then what we have oftentimes is some type of iron core on it, okay? Then we, what you do is we have to have the switch that it actually goes through and toggles back and forth. So um, what I'm going to do in here, let's see if I can make this look similar to what's up there. So when this is turned off, 
uh, what we can see here, oops, let me just turn it off the other way. I'll just stop the simulation here. So in the off position, uh, what we'll see is this here number, uh, if I get over here, uh, number 11 is my normally closed. So I'm gonna kind of draw it the same way that's on there, the, the normally closed, but um, one way to draw it is with kind of arrows. So I'm gonna draw this wire in here, that's number 11. Um, what we know is the center is number 13, and the other wire, I just happen to know it's, it's number nine. That's on the end. All right. And then what we do with number 13 is because it's normally closed to 11, we draw the, the closing on there. So when it activates, um, so you always draw it in the unpowered stage. So when it powers up, it's going to suck this over here, and the normally open will then close. So that's one way that we could um, go through and potentially draw that. There is a secondary way that you can draw it, and with that, what we would do is I'll try to do the same thing here, but I'll draw it kind of upside down of sorts. It may just look a little upside down. So still have 11 here. I have 9 here. Um, we have 11 closed, so what we tend to do is to go through and show it like this. So that's the normally closed side, that's the normally open. And because this is a double pull, double through, and I didn't do that with this, but I could go through and draw it the other side to it. We have number four coming in, and I don't recall the other two. So the uh, normal closed side is number six, and then this would be number eight. Okay, let me just check to make sure that's eight. Yeah, eight. Okay, and so over here, the way we would have it drawn is uh, four is coming in, and then the normally closed is number six, and then over here is my number eight. All right, so that's two different ways that you can see the drawings. In fact, if I could find one of my relays here, um, now, I'm trying to find one that, that you can actually see. Uh, most, of the di most of the schematics on them are, are pretty difficult to see on the camera there. But I'll just, I'll just use, yeah, this, this guy looks better. Okay. So I don't know if you can see that. Hold it up a little higher. Uh, no. The glare is going to be too much to see on that. So I'm not exactly sure how, how clear that is. So this one's got the arrows on it, where it goes uh, on either side. Um, and this one is the wiring like you see on this side, which I, I'm not sure if you can, it's, it's difficult to see it on there, but um, it's, it's wiring it, showing the wire diagram as shown here. Um, actually, maybe, maybe not. It's, it's hard to see. But uh, both of them mean the same thing. Um, and just how, which gives you the diagram how to see it. But the thing is, uh, how often do you see that on, um, on the circuits you've seen? I mean, uh, if you look, remember the electric motor control class, uh, you didn't see anything wired or symbols that looked like that. Um, what this looks like in ladder logic. It looks like this. Right? So that is the uh, ladder, or actually it's called relay logic. That's how you may see it drawn up on a relay circuit. Um, but this is actually the electrical symbol this is the ladder logic symbol that you would use. Okay, so let's draw up the circuit and see how ugly it gets. So we get another war piece of paper here. We'll draw this out. All right, so in my circuit, um, I have two power sources. I've got a neg I've got a five volt and a, a nine volt so system. So let me go through and draw the five volt in first. Um, now let's put positive on the top, okay? positive on the top. And if you look at my circuit off to the right hand side, what you'll see here is that uh, I have the switch on the negative side here. Right? I've got a, uh, a slider switch 
and a push button. Well, maybe you can't see the slider. There it is. So let's go through and draw those in. Um, that's on the negative side. So a slider switch, hopefully I made enough space there. Um, what it looks like is it, you'll have um, three dots and a slider. Now maybe they don't put a little nip, nipple on the top there, but um, so it comes in like that, right? And then in my circuit, I actually had it coming in on the center, but we could change that. I just don't like crossing wires, um, uh, but I could probably do it a little bit here. What I could do is move this guy over here, this guy over here, and have this guy go to the center. It does the same thing. It just makes it easier for me to draw here on my electrical diagram. Little, oops, that wasn't supposed to be there. That is an open switch. All right, that's an open push button switch. And then what we did is we went that uh, was going into the coil. I draw my coil. And then let's just change colors to make this easier to see. I'll bring my red wire into the coil. And then iron core. All right. So with that, I, I have this, um, we'll just deal with the bottom half of that, uh, that uh, relay there. And we'll deal with the top half, which is, is the uh, 12 volt system, control Z. Let's see, go back to where you were, there you go. So let's just work with that bottom part first. So um, again, we are going into the normally open switch. There's nothing, we're not doing anything on a normally closed switch. Um, you know, there's different ways we could do. Uh, I'm going to go through and use the second method because it makes it easier for, um, actually the first method makes it easier for me to draw here. So um, what I had uh, in that drawing there, so just kind of show you there, I've got the thir 9, 13, and 11, right? And it's the 9 that I need to come back. So I'll draw that in. And that's the one that I want to get to. So this is number nine, this is 13, all right? And the way it's drawn here, you can see that I've, my 13 is going back to my, uh, it looks like it's going back to negative, right? So I'm gonna go through and run that. I'm just gonna dash it here so that you can see that's my wire. Just to, so you can see the difference. I'm bringing it back over here and here, and then you'll see nine here. What I did is I wired it from here into here. Now, that's only half the circuit, right? So now we also have to deal, if you want, I could go through and put the other side, you know, that's the side that we're actually gonna go through and run the light bulb. So, um, yeah, we'll just do it the same way. Four, uh, eight, four, and six. It's going to six by default. Um, my power is coming on here. Uh, let's just run a separate power because it's a different power source. This is my 12 volt power source. All right, power source is gonna come out of eight. Go up and light my light bulb. And I did that upside down, oops. Let's continue on with red. All right. So that relay is tricking that to turn the light bulb on. So that's what our, our, our circuit would look like if we we're doing electric, oops, sorry, electrical diagram. You can't see everything because I kind of ran off the screen there. Okay, there it goes. That's the 12 volt, that's the five volt. So what is happening here is when I push this down, I am activating this, bringing it over. I'm locking it in and I'm bringing the negative into here. Well, when I do this switch here, it's not breaking this line. The problem here is that when we do a ceiling circuit, and you all are familiar with this, when I draw the, the ladder logic, you go, oh, well, of course, that's the way it's supposed to be drawn. 
is that this wire should have not been here, but what it should have been, oops, let's use a different, this should have gone here, right? So we should be sealing the switch, not going back to here, because if we go all the way back here, we're not breaking, and that's, that's an issue. So um, to kind of demonstrate that, why don't we pull out a contactor? I got a contactor around here somewhere. There's one. Everyone's got a contactor laying around, right? So here I have a contactor. And, well, right here, I have a, uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to pull this wire. I'm going to jerk everything around. I've got a 24 volt power source. And so if I come on this 24 volt power source, I can go through. I can close it and, in fact, it closes either way. It doesn't matter which way you wire this, uh, it will close it either way. So the idea is if I had a switch, you know, I'd be switching on the power. I would, you know, run a three phase motor or uh, heater, whatever high voltage or high current source I'm, I'm using, right? Um, so what we want to do is to be able to, you know, push that button once and have it sealed. So what we could do is run, and that's what this normally open is typically used for, using the normally open here, right? And if I go through and take this into here, right? And um, then run that guy down to here. Now, the idea here is that um, this wire here, would be going to the switch. But instead of going to the switch, I ran it right to the current, the positive side. So I don't have a switch in there. So the problem with this is that when I go through and now power it, it stays locked. I've sealed it. Um, and because this wire goes back to the back to you know my, my positive, it doesn't go to the the braking system is not going to break. And the only way to actually break it is if you were to go through and disconnect it. Now, just to kind of explain what, what we typically, what this, this push button is for, so I'm just going to go put these two guys together. Uh, no, I'm not going to put it together. Uh, da, 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 um, yeah, so it, it's hard to tell here because I don't have any uh, thing engaged here. But the idea is typically when we're um, troubleshooting, this button here, we can go through and just switch on and push it down, motor comes on, release it, motor goes off. And if I'm able to push this down, right, and, and we don't want it to seal, right, because that's, that's the bar problem, we don't want it to seal. Uh, so this needs to be sealing the switch. It doesn't, you know, it can come here, but this end here needs to go to the other, you know, if this wire is coming out, it's going to go to the other side of the switch, not to the live wire. But um, the point here is that when we're working on an electric motor control system or something, we can just push this button and if the motor spins, doesn't make any funky sounds or something, we know, okay, our side works fine. So our problem must be on the control side. Um, because if I push it down, you know, I know all my wiring is done. The, the power side usually is not that much hard uh, wire. I mean, it is possible for you to mess up a wire or maybe your overload relays tripped out or something like that. But um, what we want to do is to be able to just push that down without it actually latching. So the, what I was wiring there, and I showed you in the um, Tinkercad, uh, that is not the correct way to go through and wire it. So what you're going to have to do is not have that green vertical wire. It doesn't, doesn't go to ground. It needs to go somewhere else. So I'm going to have you all fix that. And it's not that difficult to fix. but uh, I'd like you to go through, fix that, take a picture of it, and it shouldn't take you too long, especially since I've drawn it out here. Um, you might be able to uh, figure out how to resolve it from looking at this, okay? So let me go through and just draw this one more time here. Uh, I wanna draw it as the ladder logic would appear. So <clears throat> let's go through, oh yeah, I'm sorry, there's one more thing I did want, I did wanna point out with this guy. So with this guy here, um, we could go through and, and you might think, oh, can we power this with an Arduino? Well, 
the issue here is that this runs on 24 volts, right? So our Arduino only puts out five volts. And well, what do I mean by five volts? Well, let's go through and switch screens here for just a second. Let me see if I get this to do what I want it to do. Uh, can't find the right screen. <clears throat> there we go. Is that um, in Arduino, what we're going to have here is we're going to have, like we have here, a five volt system here. But on the top part of this relay, we're going to go through and power 24 volts. That 24 volts is not going to be running a light. Uh, what it's going to be running? Well, it's going to be running potentially a contact relay. So what I'm going to need to do is to have something like, um, and unfortunately, I don't have it handy in front of me because I don't happen to see it. Well, we'll use this guy. Just, just you can you kind of assume what I'm talking about here, even though I don't have it in front of me. So um, this guy here, oh, there it is. So here I have a six volt relay, right? So I could theoretically use the six volts or maybe even five volts here is enough five volts is enough coming out of the Adreno to trigger this relay. So the six, six volt relay is then going to trigger my 24 volt relay. So we refer to that, well, in some sense as an interposing relay. Now, the other part to it is, and this is gonna be interesting if you get to the um, electric motor control class, is so now I have 24 volts out here, but I need to say in the signal, back to my control system to tell my control system, hey, I, I, I've got power here, or um, you know, maybe I have a sensor out here. That sensor is gonna be putting out 24 volts. How do I get it back to six volts? Well, that's where we go through and we put in a 24 volt relay, and the 24 volt relay is gonna be triggering six volts on this side. So looking at this diagram here, um, what I'm trying to say is that we might actually go through and have a 24 volt relay here in the center. It's triggered with 24 volts, but up here we have the five or six volts. So we oftentimes have that system, but it, it's not 24 volts and six volts. But what we tend to have is we will go through and switch this back here is that we are going to have some type of, I don't know if you can see that, we have AC voltage, and so this is triggered with AC voltage like we saw in the electric motor control one class. Um, so I can go through and use my six volt here to trigger AC voltage, to, to trigger, well, why don't we grab one of those guys, okay? <clears throat> so here is my AC, this one takes, uh, AC voltage to trigger. So I'm going to go through and trigger AC voltage with a six volt relay. And then what I will do in my AC circuits, I've got AC sensors or whatever AC switches and what have you, is that we're going to power this and it's going to go through and close a signal back to my six volt system. So this is kind of why I'm trying to show you this is because um, as I said, this is the Mechatronics 1 class. What we're trying to do is introduce you to some additional concepts. Now, um, if I was going to take this one more step further, this is an even more interesting uh, kind of configuration. Um, so what's, what we, we can do is, is we can electrically um, make sure that things don't short out. But um, I just want to suggest this that when I get to the second video, uh, the second lab part is that this actually has a normally closed relay. And what a normally closed relay allows us to do is if this goes down, it opens that circuit. This goes down, opens this one. This is normally open, that one closes. So the normally open is used to seal this side. The normally closed is a mechanical interlock that 
keeps this side from activating when this is down. So what I would do is I'd run my switch through the normally closed. So if this is on and I push for the other side to come on, right here the power can't come through here because it's opened up and it won't allow the electric to activate the other solenoid. Now that in some sense is a uh, electrical safety to prevent it. There's also a mechanical system in here where I can't push down this side when this comes down. Now that's an issue when I'm doing electrical relays like this. I, if I had the two, if I use two relays, which we'll get to after a bit, um, if I use two relays here, those two relays are not interlocked. It doesn't have that kind of interlock that we have on the uh, dual contactors, which you all saw in the class. All right. So let's show you one last thing. Now, I did say that this relay was, or contactor, was activated with 24 volts. Well, why do we have 24 volt contactors? Well, because we have PLCs. This is um, a Muller uh, PLC. They got bought out by Eaton. And what we have in PLCs with even Alan Bradley, um, they run. They can run on DC or AC. They oftentimes run on DC. Now, we'll get to that in a moment. But you'll see this one runs on 24 volts. So I have eight different outputs here that I can use to trigger this guy here. All right. So what's kind of the difference here is that this guy can handle 500 milliamps. And my little Arduino can only handle about 40 milliamps. So uh, I'd have to figure out what the resistance is on this. If I took the resistance, you know, this is 24 volts, and I know the voltage. If I know the resistance, I divide the voltage by the resistance, I could figure out how much current it was going to take to close that big old bugger there, right? That's going to probably take a, a bit of current to go through and close it. But, you know, up here it does say that uh, when it does close, uh, it has some, some closing power. You know, you can go through and uh, it can handle 32 amps at 690 volts, right? So it's quite a bit of, of, of current that that can handle. And, you know, some of that current is inrush. But to, to get to that same point is that, you know, maybe five milliamps or 500 milliamps is not enough to go through and close that. Uh, so that's where we have these little guys, little uh, ice cube, um, or actually, these are referred to as ice cubes, but I don't know what you call this. Maybe the Jello cube. Um, so this one here, you'll see that it actually. I, oops, sorry, it's not in the picture there. It takes five volts to go through and activate this guy. And what it has, it has the ability to handle 10 amps either at 250 volts AC, 125 volts AC, or 28 or 30 volts DC. So that can handle 10 amps. That guy could open, could close that. Um, you know, the power would come for the, the normally open, normally closed. It wouldn't be the five volts that we use. So our, our um, uh, Arduino could potentially go through and close this relay. This relay could then go through and trigger this. Now, why did I bring that up? Is because if you look at some PLCs, what you'll see is that Sometimes they're transistors that trigger your outputs. Sometimes they actually have these relays inside. It might even be this exact same relay that's being triggered in there. So why do we need to know that is because depending on what type of um, output we need, we might need to have a PLC that has uh, relays in it, or we might be able to get by with just this transistor. Now, looking at this system, I'm going, well, you know what? It, maybe 500 milliamps is not enough to do that, but maybe I could go through and find me a 24 volt, and not like this. You could find one smaller like this. In fact, I think I showed you one earlier. Eh, it's not in this box. It was that little red one that I had before. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's a 24 volt. I'm not exactly sure. I know it had like 200 kilo kilo ohms of resistance so um, I don't have that handy so yeah a little um, I'm gonna call it uh, a jello cube 
And so it had a little red jello cube that could potentially handle that. So you might have to go through and put a transfer. So that's what I'm trying to do, trying to protect my PLC. What are you trying to do? Well, you're trying to protect, <clears throat> oh, come loose. All right, guys, safe. All right, I think. All right, I uh, had a little bit of an issue there with my microphone kicking out and using uh, Zoom. Zoom sometimes freaks out a little bit. I'm going late at night here, so maybe it's because it's across the midnight hour or something, some time zone somewhere. All right, so uh, that's kind of the idea why, 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 it's, why I've been wasting so much time, it seems like, talking about relays um, is because you will not only need to know that, but um, you may be needing to replace these guys. I'll explain a little bit why these relays burn out um, as we go on and um, what we can do to kind of, and the whole thing really is, uh, well, how do you properly wire a relay? You know, I'm just showing this simple way here that there's a couple more things that you have to consider when you're wiring in the relays. All right, so let me take a moment to figure out where I'm at. Let me pause a second. All right, so let me bring back the circuit that you're going to be working on. Again, you know, I, I did a lot of explanation on, on, on transformers that the lab should not take you very long. Um, you kind of have to think a little bit about it. Again, I'll, I'll post the drawing up in just a moment. Oh, yeah, so let me show you the drawing there. I was gonna do the ladder logic. I'll get to that in just a moment. All right, well, we'll see this for just a second. But um, what I, I wanted to kind of point out here, oops, I didn't show you that. Let me transition to that. Uh, the, the ladder logic here, right? So this is the, the circuit. Well, since I got it up there, might as well do the ladder logic on that. So the ladder logic looks a lot easier, right? I mean, you all are, are probably familiar with ladder logic. You've seen it before. Let's go through and draw it up quickly, okay? So, do the same thing I had before, positive on top, negative on the bottom, All right? Can you see that off to the left-hand side? No, you cannot, so let me move things around here. Circuit will show up a little bit there. <clears throat> oh, come on. There we go, I'm trying to show everything here at once. All right, so um, uh, again, my, um, my positive here is going into the coil. So I'm just gonna draw my coil first. All right. Positive coming in the coil, all right. Off my negative, on the bottom side there, I got my slider switch first, right? Um, I would say I was gonna do this with uh, relay logic or like you would typically see it. So um, you would still see the same symbol, electrical symbol uh, here. So I'm gonna draw that in. You'd have the push button, still the push button. And you know, I had something set up here and I forgot to show it earlier. So let me switch over to that. Um, so uh, what I'm doing here is really something that um, you have seen before. Uh, I, I, I use that loosely, okay? Um, so um, in the electric motor control class, and I know I'm not drawing it like this right now, but um, if you were just to use that slider switch, you could use a slider switch just to power it on and to power it off. Uh, I wanted to have that button to turn it on. So you just, you don't flip it, hold it, but you just tap, tap the button and it goes on. Now, one of the things with the, um, this method here is that we were using a motor starter and the concern that we have is a couple different things. But the one thing is that the, the contact we crossed here could potentially be, you know, cause I mean, 
no, I'm sorry, this is a two wire. This is not the motor starter. So um, yeah, they just go to and switch on the coil here. I was starting to think of something else. But the three wire, um, and this is not three wires in a sensor that we'll talk about a little bit later. But when we start talking about the three wire, and the issue that I had was that instead of bringing this contact, this uh, uh, normally open, I had brought the normally open all the way back here to the power. And so what was happening was um, I was bypassing all the switches. And I want to make sure that I come back and seal the switch, not seal the circuit. Um, that's when I go through and push the button down on the contactor and it stayed down is because I short, shorted through all the entire control circuit and just went around the entire thing. So once this got powered, it stayed powered, it kept this closed all the time. So let me go through and clear that. So this is what we're trying to wire here is essentially the three wire type of control. And that's, that's the kind of button that I've just drawn uh, here a second ago. So let me switch screen back. So um, there's that switch there. And then what we're going to have is that ceiling circuit. All right. Now, when we do the ceiling circuit, we then go through and label it, right? So in my circuit off there to the left there, you know, I don't know how you want to label the two sets of contact. You want to call the top part A and the bottom half B, or you call it top and bottom. I'm going to call the bottom half B. So that's my B normally open and we're going to go through and bring that into the other side of the coil. Now I need to go through and draw the switch, right? So I've got my, I'm going to bring the negative in here. I've got number 13 and then 13 went up and I had that um, going to, oh, geez, what was that? I don't know the number. I don't remember what the number was here. By default, it goes to number 11. Okay, so number 11. And what we're hoping to do is to, to get that to trigger and come back to number nine, right? But that's not how we draw it when we're doing this typical ladder logic. In fact, what we do is right here, all we do, and I'll just go through here and uh, put the relay And then we just put the C there. We don't draw all that crazy stuff. That gets drawn down here. Um, so it's not the actual physical electrical circuit, but it's a representation of it. Um, and I don't know, maybe that should be CB, right? Something like that. It's also got the CA side. The CA side is using the other power source. So that was the 5 volt. This is the 12 volt. Oh, I was going to come off. I don't come off of that. Right. And do I go to the coil? No. Um, I don't even need to draw that in. It doesn't need to be in the same picture. You oftentimes you see it in a completely diagram up above and it just says, you know, that's that's the relay, right? So I'm gonna come up here and I know that my power source was going into it, so it was a normally open and contactor C A normally open, right? And then that went to my light. Let's see if I draw it correctly here. All right. In fact, you see, you know, this whole that didn't even need to come around. It could have just been left right up on top of here. Right. So that's the simplicity of relay logic. Um, as I try to tell people in electric motor control, it's it's it, it, that's what you see, but that's not how you're gonna. That may not be how you wire it. It may not look exactly the same as that. Um, because those are in different places. They're, I mean, sorry, these are together. They're not in two different places, um, which is kind of how the electrical circuit is being drawn out. So I'm gonna go through and make copies of these and I'll put those online for you. That's to wire that first circuit there, all right? All right, so back to why I was trying to go through and show you all this. So let me get the screens switched around here again. Um, boop, boop. There we go. So I'm going to go through and transition over to this one. I know it's only half a screen because I'm trying to hide the circuit a little bit. Um, and maybe I should have hit, I, I probably have a little bit too much shown then there I should, but maybe that, maybe you'll get it worked out. Um, so I actually wired this circuit differently. 
So um, just to just kind of say, when, when you see this bulb one, this is my bulb two one, um, just so that you're not confused here, um, I'm actually putting all the switches on the positive side up here, okay? So the question is sometimes, do I put the switches on the ground side or do I put the switches on the positive side? Well, that's kind of an interesting question. Um, and we kind of touched on this a little bit in class, is that if the switches are up on the positive side, we refer to those as sourcing switches. If I put the switches on the ground side, then they're considered sinking switches. Now, it's all kind of perspective of what you're looking at. So if I go through and look at the switch, the switch sees the coil as sourcing. The coil sees the switch as sinking. So the electric is coming into the switch, but from the coil, it sees that as the sinking direction. So you kind of have to be careful when you hear people say sinking and sourcing. It's like, what perspective are you talking about? Are you talking about the, the coil or are you talking about the switch? So the switch, well, the, sw the switch is sinking. So oftentimes we refer to the switch as the switch sinking or sourcing. So if I was to go through and, oops, I'm sorry, you couldn't see what I was pointing at. Or I guess you could, right? Um, so, you know, same thing goes here with a, um, a PLC. Um, Am I sinking or sourcing by that switch? Is that switch, am, am I, if, what's being, what's at the, at the, um, at the uh, actuator, right? So do I have positive at the actuator or do I have negative at the actuator? Now, there's different theories behind this and I like the theory, that, and it also depends on whether you're thinking electron theory or conventional theory. But the idea that I like to think of is that I like to put my switches on the positive side, okay? And so why might I want to do that? Well, the reason I might want to do that is because sometimes my chassis is negatively grounded. So if I always have positive going to here, if I had a short in this wire, or maybe I accidentally had a screwdriver and actually touched the ground, I could potentially close that circuit because the circuit, the, the chassis is grounded and I could potentially trigger something. So if my switches are up here, right, if I touch the ground to one of these, it's not gonna go through and close that. So I tend to like to say that I like to go through, and it all depends on how the chassis is grounded. You're going to ground it with positive. You're going to ground it with negative. So those of you familiar with um, cars, oftentimes as you see, is a car is negatively grounded. So you only have to run. So if this is a light. I only have to run one wire to it, and then what I just do is take the light and touch it to the ground. And so I only need to to really run one wire to that um, that device. So not that that's what happens in our our systems. Uh, we tend to have both the negative, uh, both wires going to it, um, and and you know, question is whether it's your switching is a sourcing switch or if it's a sinking switch. Now there is reasons to have one or the other. I'm not going to go into that right now. Okay. So with that, then what I was trying to lead up to was this other circuit that I had here. Um, once you have it wired up correctly, um, kind of what I, I, I'd like to show here is that uh, I have two bulbs associated with this. And well, why would I go through and have two bulbs on there? Well, kind of the idea is if I go through and start the simulation and hit the, um, you, you'll see that the, this light comes on. If I push the button, the other light comes on. I'm going to go hide down below the screen here, so I'm not showing you the circuit here. I'm going to break it, and the other light comes back on. Hmm. 
now why would I want to do something like that? Why would I want the light to come on one side and the power to come on the other? Okay, now it's time to go back. Again, I said this is, you know, a Mechatronics one, so we're trying to put everything together. So you might have seen something like this before. It's a pneumatic manifold. Had these in the on the map systems. And let me turn it so you can see it better. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the I'm going to try to bring this down, and maybe if I get the lighting correct here, probably not. All right, so we're going to give up on the lighting. I'll just turn it off there. That might help. So what we have here on this is that we have for this, and you can just look at it. Well, how about if I make it so it's easier for you to see? Uh, I actually have a different... See if I show, uh, yeah, let's transition to this one. Okay, so what you'll see here is that I've got power on both sides of this valve here. It's a two-way five port. And I'm not sure if you can see these, di these uh, very well, but what you'll see is there's a detent on the left side. So what a detent means is that when this gets activated, so both of them are off, this one activates, and it goes over, it detents, and if the power comes off on this one, it stays locked into that position. All right? Now you might think, well, why do you have that? If I put power on here, it goes this way. If I put power on here, it goes that way. What, I mean, what's the deal? I mean, why does it have to be one or the other? Well. Now, I don't have a center off here, but the thing about your, your valves here is there's a tendency to go to the least resistance. So it's possible that the valve here might accidentally slip. Maybe I put the power here once it shifted this way, but for some reason, resistance in the airflow, this caused the valve to switch back to find the, the, the path of least resistance. So the detent holds it there. So the question is, well, why don't you just leave the power on here? Well, the reason is, you know, sometimes the power is not always on. So in the case that I'm doing the circuit right over there, like that push button, all I need to do is hit the push button and it would cause this to go over and detent. I would need to seal this side. So what I've done here is in, um, in order not to have to, to build a sealing circuit, I've used a detented, uh, circuit here to hold it over here on this position. And then if I hit the power here, it moves it over to the other side. Now, what you oftentimes saw in the um, pneumatics and hydraulics class, I think it's in both of those, what you oftentimes saw is a single, well, I don't, I'm not sure if you got to that or not. So uh, what I have is a single sided power. You had it with the, the pneumatic activated actuated uh, uh, directional control valves. But what this one does is it actually has a spring on the other side. So if I go through and touch this one, it'll switch over here. But as soon as I let off that power, it's going to snap back. So for this relay, this solenoid, I'm going to need to have a sealing circuit to go through and hold it in that position if that's what I need. Hold it until another system comes in and causes it to break. So I'm just trying you know, to understand a little bit about why you might need relays to go through and hold this. Now, I'll have to say we don't tend to hold, well, we may not hold these so much with relays, right? That's what we have a PLC for. In the PLC, we can program it, right? We can use latching and unlatching circuits to go through and latch in order to avoid having to use a, a ceiling type of circuit. And we could also go through and, and build that whole output locking. We don't actually have a coil. We just have an output bit. And we say, we're going to pretend that's a coil. And it's just going to have a value of one or zero being used activated or activated. I don't actually have to have a coil activated. I can store it as a bit. So that is where we're moving to. Okay, eventually get to that with Arduino, but the, the thing about it is sometimes you're not gonna be able to do it all in here. You're going to have to go through and implement some of these relays. All right, 
probably did that to an nth degree, but I think when I show you showed you know like how it might be implemented, detented, or if it's not detented, you might need to go through and seal it. That sealing could be done with a relay, or it could potentially be done with um, computer logic. Uh, when it comes to that, that's where you have this. I mean, you know, to seal this guy, are you going to have a relay? Well, you know, if I have a PLC that can handle 24 volts, yeah, I can deal with that. But if this is 110 volts, right, and my relay has a 24 volt output, I'm going to have to go through and implement a relay in here to take that 24 volts to change it to 110 to be able to activate my, oops, where's that other guy? To activate here, this is a um, 120, 120 amp uh, contact relay. So that's what you kind of get into in the uh, electric motor control two class. The second um, second class in the series is you're starting to deal with how do you go through and um, deal with converting between 24 volt and 110 volts. And we refer to that, and you'll see those as interposing relays, and they'll be really confusing. And I'm hoping that I've given you a little bit of introduction to relays so that it's not so confusing. So your exercise, and again, is to go through, not this bulb example here, I, I haven't, if you wanna to try to figure out how to wire that, you can take your existing, um, let me get that up here. A moment while it goes through and changes screens here. Um, I don't know if I can't quite, quite make this out here or not. Um, I don't think that is quite the right one here. So let me go through and open the right one. That's my 2X, that's the one that I started with. What you're going to go through and start with is do, 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 do. this guy here, all right? Light bulb B0, uh, light bulb zero 02. And in that there, you're gonna go through and move that slider switch down here. You're gonna put your name on here, get that working, and then make a screenshot. For some of you, it may take not little, make, take much time at all, so some of you may take a little longer. If you wanna get a little bit more creative, what you can do is go through and get yourself another bulb here and have it switch between those two light bulbs, figure out how to go through and add that to the circuit. I have another circuit for you to do where we're actually gonna do multiple relays, so I'll get that recorded here shortly as well. All right, good luck with that.